around. This is our very first original song. Dad read it. He did a good job. Stop most of the words right this time. He read it. I'm Jane Simmons. We're talking with members of the band called Locomotion. And right now, I'm talking to Warren Batts. Warren, how are you today? So far, so good. It's a beautiful day. Isn't it? It's gorgeous. Warren plays guitar in the band. And I think you have a guitar here. But can you tell me how early did you get started in music? Uh, about eight or nine in that vicinity. Eight or nine. Eight or nine years old, yeah. Did you take formal musical training when you were young? Nope. None whatsoever. You learned it the hard way. Does one play guitar by ear? Mm, that's the way I still play guitar after 30 years of rock and roll. By ear. <laughs> you've been with other bands, and I know of one you've been with that's very famous, and that was Bill Haley and the Comets. Can you tell us about that? Uh, it's not a lot to tell about. It is a lot of traveling. Uh, I guess there's a little bit of glorying being in the world's first rock and roll band, but uh, it's a lot of hard work, real hard work. Being on the road must interfere to some degree in normal living that many people have as a personal life. How does that impact your personal life? Uh, it's a minor impact, simply because there are so many occupations that take you away from your home. Uh, being a musician, you at least have a choice of, I've had it 
I'm going home for a couple of weeks. And you can't do that with if you're a truck driver, or you can't do that if you're a salesman. So you have a little more, I guess, a little advantage over being away. You can control the amount of time you are away, uh, which is very advantageous. You also write music as well as play music. And I believe you've written a song that lo the band Locomotion plays. Can you tell me the title of it and how it came about that you wrote the song? Well, it's uh, called Sure is a Pity. And it's, it's a baby boomer song. It's about the way things were back in the 50s and the early 60s. Dragon Maine and just having a good time. That's what the 50s were. They were fun. There was not a lot of stress because when you're growing up, mom and dad takes care of all the bills, so you got nothing to really worry about other than just going to school. So that's why the baby boomers think the 50s were such a great time. Music is not your only passion. You have a hobby that, to me, sounds fascinating. And you were kind enough to bring one. Can you show that to us? more closely and you can hold it and tell us about it <laughs> at the same can you maybe up here come bring it up because this is up here in the middle of, the, middle of everything well let's try bring it up here oh i think that's bad ah. let's see it oh okay tell me what i'm looking at what you're looking at is a very expensive toy <laughs> uh for fun, how much does it cost? For fun, they're in the $1,000 category. Okay. And uh, very dangerous, as the band has discovered. <clears throat> it's like having a weed eater on with a mind of its own. <laughs> or a flying buzzsaw. Yeah. And it is a helicopter that flies by a remote control. Right. And in fact, this particular weekend, they're having the Helicopter Nationals in Lawrenceville, Illinois, which is real close to our home. Uh, it's like 100 miles from our hometown of Evansville. Uh, I would have liked to have got to see them, but it's the way it goes. I'll read about it in the magazines, I suppose. You're going to miss it completely. Oh, you miss a lot of things, but we gain a lot of things, too. <laughs> For any young viewers, we have what recommendations would you have to aspiring musicians? Ambition. I think that's number one. You have to have a goal or an ambition to, to achieve a goal. Uh, a little bit of common sense. I think the first thing I would do if I had it to do all over again would be to go back and get piano lessons first to learn the basics, basic theory of music which is boring to kids to have to sit there and learn piano. But there's a lot can be said for learning a piano. Uh, you, you learn the basics of music, and the theory behind it, and it develops discipline. Without discipline, you're never going to achieve anything, whether it's just getting out of bed. You know. Uh, but the more disciplined, the more disciplined you become with any instrument, the better you become at it. So that would be my first step: would be to learn, take piano lessons, then go on to the guitar, horns, or whatever instrument you prefer. Uh, but the piano would teach you all the all the basics, and there's always a piano teacher. I haven't seen a town yet that didn't have somebody in it that couldn't learn or teach piano. No matter where you go. I guess you could probably go to Alaska, to Juneau, Alaska, you know, and there'd be somebody there to teach piano. Uh, guitar teachers, a little harder to find. Somebody to teach you rock and roll, you know, a little harder to find. But starting out, go with the piano lessons and learn the discipline of learning an instrument and the theory. From there on out, it's a piece of cake. 
And finally, why did you pick rock and roll? Rock and roll picked me. Uh, just as the kids are growing up nowadays with their heavy metal, in 20 years, heavy metal is going to be old rock and roll. And they're going to be telling their kids, why are you playing that obnoxious stuff? Why don't you listen to some Ozzy Osbourne? <laughs> in the same case where I was, I grew up in the 50s. My environment was the 50s. The local radio stations were pushing rock and roll. And uh, our parents' music was old-fashioned. We didn't, couldn't get into that thing, you know? We didn't know anything about the, doing the Charleston, you know? But to, to my parents, that was their music. And before that, and it just it's a vicious cycle. It's your environment. The environment you grow up in is what creates what you want to do for the rest of your life. You think that you will always play rock and roll and that it will always be your favorite? I think it will probably always be my among my favorites. I, I really can't say that I have a favorite. Uh, I can sit down and listen to jazz or country or, or some of the big band era. Uh, music is all just an interpretation of someone's feelings. And so when you listen to any piece of music, you have to listen to it for its credibility, not the overall picture of what's popular and what isn't. I mean, music is going to be popular forever. Uh, I'll probably wind up in some old folks' home playing old rock and roll, you know. And I may be there with you, and we'll be listening to the music of Locomotion on one of its many albums. We've been visiting with Warren Batts. Thank you, Warren. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jane Simmons. We're talking with members of the band called Locomotion, the show band that does primarily 50s and 60s music. And the drummer for the band is Galen Dykes. How are you, Galen? I'm doing great today. How are you? <laughs> this man plays wild drums, particularly in the song Wipeout. And he started very young in life. Tell us when you started playing. I started playing drums when I was about five years old. I used to run around the house and bang on pots and pans and everything, and so mom and dad just finally got a little fed up, and they put me in lessons, and here, learn how to play these things, learn how to do it. <laughs> so you actually took lessons, and how long did you take? You took lessons from a drum teacher? Is that how that worked? Uh, yeah, I took, uh, I've taken from several different teachers. I've had, uh, I took lessons uh, um, from a professional drummer for about six years. And I've uh, taken from other different drummers, get different uh, styles and ideas and just different ways of teaching. You know, show you how to work things out a little better and give them different ideas. But I started when I was five years old, took lessons, yeah. Then when is, when did you first start playing in a band? Well, uh, <laughs> I guess my, my first start playing in a band as a group, uh, I was in second grade. I was with all the fifth graders in the band, a little bitty short guy. Went around in the second grade, and they were all wondering why I was in there. But I started playing in the school band then. And uh, from then on, I played in high school band. I was in jazz band, pet band, everything. Everything I could get into, I did. I just had to do it. Musicals, I had to do. Uh, then I started getting into the, the college organizations and civic organizations, playing for, playing for civic musicals and all that fun stuff, and I joined, actually, I joined my first professional band when I was uh, 15 years old, and played in all kinds of clubs, and everything, I've kind of gone from there. So that puts you on the road, and how do you feel that's impacted your life personally, because it, it's not the normal <laughs> young person's personal life to be on the road, starting at what, age 15 and traveling a great deal? Well, you, uh, you get, I've learned a lot. You get to see a lot of the country. Uh, I've done, uh, I've seen a lot more than, than what most people have seen my age. Uh, yeah, I've been in New York and the East Coast and just just all over. You get to, get to see a lot of things, get to meet a lot of different people. It's, it's really good to get education. You also played on a cruise ship, right? 
Uh, yeah, I played on a little bit of a cruise ship, uh, Bermuda Star, and I uh, played uh, all, you know, all kinds of different places. <laughs> if you had to give advice to young people who may be watching us and who want to get into music and would perhaps want to be drummers with a band like Locomotion, what would be your suggestions for them? Well, if you want to be a drummer uh, or want to play any instrument, uh, the easiest, best way is to learn from somebody who knows how. Uh, always uh, listen to the older guys. They, they, you know, you may think they may not know what they're talking about. Oh, they don't, they don't know what they're doing. Or, but uh, with what they say is usually right. They know what they're talking about and uh, uh, work at it. Just don't, if you want to go and pursue something pursue it. Don't say, well, I kind of do this. And I, I think I want to do this. Just go ahead and do it. Try it. And try hard at it. That's, that's, that's where you uh, proceed with uh, any, any instrument. You've been trying hard at it for many years, starting at second grade, and here you're only in your early 20s. But we appreciate your spending time with us today. And thank you. We've been talking with Galen Dykes with the band Locomotion. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Hi, this is Jane Simmons. We're visiting with members of the band called Locomotion. They're a show band specializing in 50s and 60s music. And we have with us today Jim Bays. How are you? Oh, just fine. How are you? I think uh, on the stage you're known as Jumping Jim Bays. Yeah. Where'd that come from? Oh. A past member out of the group um, snuck up behind me one night while I was doing a bass solo. It was on a rather tall stage, and uh, he had accidentally bumped me, and I went flying off into the crowd doing my solo, and everybody thought it was really great. And uh, purely by accident, I happened to land right. I didn't break anything, and everybody just thought it was part of the show, and they started calling me Jumping Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been playing a musical instrument well just when did you start I guess okay. it's I was around 12 years old I believe somewhere around there did you ever take lessons or have professional training before you actually got on the road and I think you start playing in honky tonks you told me in local yeah. bars no not on bass guitar I had no training at all just uh, got records and started listening to what other bass players were doing and listening to the older musicians and uh, learned that way. You have a very extensive background outside of rock and roll. Why don't you share that with us because you were into country western and um, yeah, share that. I was on the road for almost two years with Kenny Price as his bass player and front man, singer. Uh, traveled on the road for a year and a half playing steel guitar um, with the George Jones Show. Uh, played with Hank Williams Jr., Roy Cuff Jr., uh, Johnny Cash, Buck Owens, Carl Perkins. Just quite a few people, to name a few. Now that puts you on the road, and that does have an impact, I should think, on one's personal life. How, how has that influenced your personal life and your time with your family? It's something my wife has learned to accept and my daughter just loves it because her dad is a rock and roll star in her eyes and uh, it's it's nice every once in a while they get to join us would uh, you have suggestions for young people who would like to get into this profession and what would be your advice to them get some kind of formal training from from somebody that's qualified so you learn the right way um, be dedicated and determined in what you pursue uh, if your heart's not into it it's just going to be a passing thing um, music's a great release of tension and uh, it's just I love it <laughs> it's my life this man does love his music Thank you. We've been visiting with Jim Bates with Band Locomotion. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jane Simmons, and we're talking with members of the Band Locomotion. 
do 50s and 60s songs. They're a show band. And today we have the singer for the band, John Urbina. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have you here. Um, you started in music very young, as I remember you telling me. Can you tell us how you started and how that developed and if you had professional training when you started out? Well, I started singing with my dad when I was, uh, I guess, about eight, six, seven, eight years old, something like that. Just something to do, just to hang out with Dad. And he taught me a lot of the old songs and a lot of harmony and stuff like that. And it was just fun. And then I got more interested in it and started learning more songs and more words. And it just kind of accumulated to pretty much an infinite, you know, I've never counted how many songs that I actually know. But it's all 50s and 60s because it's fun. And uh, as far as guitar, I started playing guitar when I was 14. And I took about 10, 11 years of uh, lessons, uh, extensive jazz, uh, chordal uh, studies and things like that, lots of theory. Um, not a whole lot of lead work. Some I took, you know, I, it was just part of the course, but I didn't really, wasn't that interested in that. I wanted to be able to sing and play. And uh, so that's what I did with that. Also, you've been with quite a few bands, and you've opened for some big-name people in the business. Can you tell us a little more about that? Uh, well, I've been with uh, two other 50s and 60s bands, and then I was with a band in college that uh, they did quite a bit of traveling. And through the course of all that, I was very fortunate to uh, have opened for like Vicky Bird and Fog Hat, uh, Head East, uh, Haley's Comets, uh, the Drifters, the Coasters, bands like that, which is really neat. All of this requires you to be on the road and that of course takes in a lot more time maybe in your personal life than for most people how does that impact your personal life uh... for me right now it's impacting pretty heavily because i've got a uh, a baby on the way my wife and i are expecting a child and uh... but uh... she's a musician also and when we got married she understood that i had to do this not as an expression of my ego or anything, but it was just a part of me, the way I express myself. And um, she's been very, very gracious about the whole thing. Definitely not a yes man, but very supportive of what I do. And uh, that's good. We can talk about it and disagree about it and uh, live through it. It's, it's strange. It works well. You've been with Locomotion with the band for how long? Uh, I was part of the original group that started, uh, Warren and I started this thing out about three years ago, and uh, we've had several personnel changes since then, improving as we go, and uh, it's it's been a while, three years, and hopefully we've got three or four more to go. Well, speaking of wild, when you're on the stage, you are all over the stage, and all of you except Galen, the drummer, of course, stays in one place. But the, uh, the, the other three of you dance around, and you have choreography. Is this something you rehearse and lay out on paper first, or how does that work? No, no, we don't rehearse. Not at all. We've never rehearsed any choreography. It, uh, the, the music should move you, and uh, that's basically what it does with us. We just get wound up in it, and try to think in terms of, you know, making it visually pleasing, but also sometimes it gets a little chaotic, and that's what's exciting, because this one has this idea, and the other one goes, oh, that's cool, I can do this too, and we're kicking all over the place, and it's it's a lot of fun. Also moving, as I remember seeing your shows, you move out into the audience, and this is a crowd pleaser, right? You go. It's very important to do that. Um, a lot of bands, I'd say the majority of bands that are out now, at any level, uh, will just stand there and play the music, or they have a great light show, or they're the loudest band in the area, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, but they all have that dimension. They're two-dimensional. Okay, they're the band and they're on the stage, and that's it. And what we do is try to break that barrier and take that third dimension out to the audience, and they're a part of the show too, a very important part of the show because we don't have any energy if they don't feel any energy, and. Uh, if they get excited and into what we're doing, that we give them just that much more. And uh, well, I have seen you give so much and so much energy that 
perspiration. I mean, you are just <laughs> dripping wet, and, and most of the other ba band members are just soaked by the time break time comes around. Always. Do you lose weight? Always. Um, usually in a week's time, I'll, I'll lose about five pounds. It's usually just water, and then if I get my day or two off, I'll you know try to pick it back up. You got to stay healthy. And uh, but yeah, we we've all lost a lot of weight. I started when we started. I weighed 155 pounds. I weigh about 140, 145 now. So and that's that's where I stay at. I've been a little less, but that wasn't healthy. And I was wondering how to lose nine pounds. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> Join local. Travel us for four weeks. <laughs> finally, finally. Um, for the young people who may be watching us, what would be your suggestions to them for pursuing any interest they may have in playing guitar or being in a band, being on the road, or being a musician and being in the music industry? Uh, basically, and this is something that would apply to the music industry, any anything that they choose to do. If you want to do something, if you have a dream to do something, do it. Uh, you will always have people telling you you can't do something, you can't be something. The only way that that's going to come true is if you believe that. If you don't believe that, if you believe you can do anything you want to do, you can do it. Because when I started doing this, it was for fun. I was doing it on weekends. Then I decided to make the commitment, make it my, my living. And... Uh, I've had to, you know, deal with people all all the way down the line, and I will always have to deal with people telling me you can't do that. I'm doing it, and I'm loving it. You know, I'm enjoying it. And uh, one of the main things I've learned from this band is if you set your mind to it, uh, discipline yourself, motivate yourself. You motivate yourself. You can do anything. Anything is possible. The band has an uh, album, has an album, and I think cassettes. Um, if people are interested in your music and can't come see you in person, they're in the works right now. Yeah, we've uh, got some time lined up in studio in in studio down in Nashville, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get everything together here within the next three or four months. And uh, I don't know, just keep hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> we have been talking with John Urbina of the band Locomotion. Thank you, thank you, John. Thank <laughs> you.